Hello everyone. Uh, today we'll have a class on physiotherapy management in open heart surgery. Let's see. These are the contents. It has definitions, indications, procedure, risk, long-term management and physiotherapy management. Definition. In an open heart surgery, the chest wall is opened when the heart is operated upon. This surgery could include operations directly on the blood vessels, on the muscles of the heart itself or the valve. Now, CABG is a very common type of surgery done on adults. During this surgery, a healthy artery or vein is grafted to a blocked coronary artery. This allows the grafted artery to bypass the blocked artery and bring fresh blood back to the heart. The indications repair or replace heart valves which allow blood to travel through the heart, repair damaged or abnormal areas of the heart, implant medical devices that help the heart beat properly, replace the damaged heart with a donated heart. The procedure the patient is given general anesthesia. This ensures that they will be asleep and pain free through the whole surgery. The surgeon makes an 8 to 10 inch cut in the chest. The surgeon cuts through all or part of the patient's breastbone to expose the heart. Once the heart is visible, the patient may be connected to a heart-lung bypass machine. The machine moves blood away from the heart so that the surgeon can operate. The surgeon uses a healthy vein or artery to make a new part around the blocked artery. The surgeon closes the breastbone with a wire, leaving the wire inside the body. The original cut is then stitched up. The skin is then sutured and the patient is allowed time to recover. Generally, most open heart surgeries take anywhere between 5 to 7 hours to perform. It takes 4 to 6 weeks for complete recovery. The risk following the surgery. The most common risk of complication associated with an open heart surgery is an infection of the chest. Any infections of the wound can be easily treated with antibiotics and with regular cleaning and dressing. There is also risk of developing a heart attack or a stroke. The risk assessment will be performed by the anesthesiologist and also by operating surgeon. Patients may develop an irregular heartbeat following the surgery. This can be controlled by medications alone. Low-grade fever is common and can be treated with simple paracetamols. Some people may develop a chest infection or a pneumonia and may require oral antibiotics. Low hemoglobin can also be seen after surgery and some patients may require a blood transfusion. Following discharge, patients will require some degree of pain management and advice to follow at home. Long-term management includes rest is required, blood thinners to prevent clot formation on the valves, close monitoring and breathing exercises. Now, let's come to the physiotherapy management part. There are three main areas of physiotherapy which we will take care of. First is the chest care, then is the general mobility and third is the rehabilitation. Let's have a look on the position of the patient. Now the position should be always a upright position and it should not be a slump position. Chest care here includes mainly breathing exercises and effective cuffing techniques. The breathing exercises are as follows. The patient is asked to sit upright and place the hand on his abdomen at the lower end of the breast bone. Take a normal breath in and feel the hand movement outwards. Then breathe out normally and feel the hand move in. Practice this relaxed breathing for about 1 minute. Follow this by taking a deep breath in, keeping your shoulders relaxed. Hold the breath for a count of 3, then breathe out. Next is the 
cuffing. Effective cuffing is extremely important to clear any phlegm present on the chest. When cuffing, ensure that he is sitting upright and that support his wound with the cuff pillow provided. Take a deep breath in. Cuff strongly from your tummy and not from your throat. Next is the general mobility. The physiotherapist will, if possible, help you sit out in a chair on the day, first day after the operation and start your work on the second day despite any drips or drains you may have. When moving in bed or rising from a chair, it is important not to push down through your arms. This would put too much of strain through your wound. Walking is an excellent way to take deep breaths and assist in clearing your chest. It will also increase your strength after your operation. Rehabilitation after discharge Following the cardiac surgery, it is extremely important to maintain and increase your exercise tolerance levels. Exercise at your pace and avoid sudden burst of activities. The following regimen of exercise should be carried out in a hospital and until your clinic appointment. It is also useful to continue to use these exercises as a warm-up prior to working and other activities. Coping exercises. During the first two weeks after you are discharged home, it is important to continue with the coping exercises we have been practicing during your hospital stay. First is the diaphragmatic breathing exercise, second is the segmental breathing exercise, and third is the chest expansion breathing exercises. Let's come to shoulder exercises. These exercises are to help ease off some of the stiffness and aching you may develop following your heart surgery. This should be done slowly and with repetitions. First, as we can see, it is called shoulder shrugs. Here, the shoulders shrug towards the ears and then push down. Next is, place your fingertips on your shoulders and draw circles with your elbows. The pictures here are given. Then followed by trunk exercises. First is alternate side bending in standing. First, bend sideways to the left without leaning forwards or backwards. Slide your fingers towards your knees. Count to five and slowly return to standing. Repeat to the right side. Next is the thoracic rotation. Sit it with your hand across your chest. Slowly turn to the right. Hold for a count of five. Repeat to the left. Next is the leg exercise. The following exercises will help improve your circulation and ease any stiffness or swelling that may be present due to leg wounds. This should be done at the same time and the same amount as the shoulder exercises. You should continue these exercises for at least 6 weeks. First is alternate knee bends. Sitting with your legs straight out in front of you, bend one knee towards your chest. Straighten and repeat with opposite leg. Half squats, holding onto sturdy furniture for support. Stand with feet slightly apart and back straight. Bend your knee to 45 degrees slowly and straighten. Keep heels on the floor throughout. Step ups. Lift your right foot onto the first step of your staircase. Bring your left foot up to join it. Step down. Repeat leading with your left foot. Then comes walking. As well as these exercises, it is important that you continue to take regular walks at least twice a day initially. Prior to discharge, you will have taken regular brisk walks with your physiotherapist. It is essential that you continue to work outdoors when you go home and gradually increase the length of time walking as you feel able. Initially, you should aim for at least 10 minutes walks and this could be increased gradually. 
depending on how you feel. It is natural to become slightly short of breath on exercises. If however the shortness of breath is excessive and doesn't recover within a minute or so, you are working too hard. You should always be able to continue talking when exercising. Try to aim for a 30 minute walk by the time of your first clinic appointment. There are some general advices. These are as follows. First, following the cardiac surgery, it is natural to experience new ache, pains and stiffness in your chest, back and neck area as bruising appears and your vein heals. This does not resemble angina pain. It may take 2 to 3 months before it completely resolves. Do not lift, carry, push or pull anything heavy for at least 6 weeks until your breastbone heals. Avoid sudden exertion or exercise which will put an unexpected load on your heart. A gradual increase in your exercise tolerance is therefore important. Never continue to exercise if you experience palpitations, undue shortness of breath, extreme fatigue or dizziness. Do not exercise on a full stomach.